Okay, so last night I had to uh, play with processor affinity on all of the career's lower environments. <clears throat> and the reason why is because they're looking for a way to lower the CPUs on the prod box. <clears throat> so, um, you know, in order to do that, we have to see if we can get by with fewer processors. So what I did was I set the affinity for these guys in here. And now you'll have to you'll have to uncheck both of these boxes because it says automatically set for both of them. Come on, get in there. Can't find the X. There we go. So <clears throat> I'm gonna make this as big as I can. There we go. So you notice how I picked four and then four, right? So we've got eight CPUs on here, or 16 CPUs, and I picked four and four, which is eight, so that's half. But you notice I didn't pick the same ones. So processor affinity is gonna be the one for uh, normal SQL wear and tear kind of stuff, right? Uh, Reindexes and queries and stuff like that. And IO affinity is just what it sounds like. Um, <clears throat> everything that happens on a computer takes two things, right? Absolutely nothing happens without two things. Do you all know what those two things are? The input and output? Uh, actually, not a bad guess. Um, RAM and CPU. Absolutely everything has to have CPU time because it has to run the code. Even clicking on something, right? Has, has an instruction and it takes the CPU to, and it takes CPU time to get to that and run it. And RAM, because absolutely everything is loaded in RAM before it does anything at all, right? That's why we have things like uh, PLE and SQL and whatnot, because, <clears throat> you know, everything you do gets loaded up into RAM and then it gets read and then it gets processed and all of that. And then it gets pushed back down to disk, right? So um, with the I.O. affinity, that is going to be all of your, clearly all of your disk activity. You really don't want CPU or you really don't want processor and I.O. affinity on the same CPUs. You can easily choke out your system and you can cause a lot of probably context switching is my guess is what would happen. So as well, when you set processor affinity, you get this funny little NUMA thing that happens, right? And it's, it's not good or bad, I suppose. It's just how it works. And so what that means is that CPU is that processes and SQL are tied to specific CPUs. So let's say that I put an update statement in that's going to do, say, 30 million rows, <clears throat> um, it might not be able to do a full 30 million rows in one hit, right? There may be a query that's running as well from another user. And that query, you know, we've got what we call cooperative multitasking in Windows, right? And so what that really means, and, and, and while while SQL uh, overrides that to a degree, it manages its own multitasking. Um, <clears throat> what's going to happen is everything needs a slice of time, right? So one process is going to say, um, you know, SQL is going to say to one process, hey, you need to basically come to a stopping point and let this other guy have it. So <clears throat> what's going to happen here is... Uh, this one, the first processes is going to be unloaded from the CPU cache and my process is going to be loaded into the CPU cache and then <clears throat> my process is going to run. Meanwhile, that other process is waiting, right? Because it's tied to a specific CPU. It's tied to that CPU. How does it get the CPU? Just whatever CPU it happens to, to be started on, right? 
So that CPU that it gets started on, it could be CPU zero, it could be Z CPU three, it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> but once it starts on that CPU, it stops on that CPU. I mean, it finishes on that CPU. And so uh, with that, if there are 10 other processes that are tied to that CPU, you can see how a lot of that multitasking space, uh, uh, how a lot of that multitask, that cooperative multitasking type thing, right, is going to be spent loading and unloading the CPU cache as these guys have to give up their quanta to other processes. <clears throat> Are we good so far? Yeah. You don't sound very sure. Give me a nice hearty yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, <clears throat> so a CPU means like uh, each one is different. The CPU zero, CPU one, uh, irrespective of uh, the Numa node, right? Right. Okay. <clears throat> now, with these guys tied to each CPU, uh, you get very clearly that we're going to spend a lot of time loading and unloading the cache. <clears throat> and again, that's probably going to come out in context switches. <clears throat> now, what I also did, and I, and I put this in the blog too, was I added trace flag 8002 to the startup parameters. And what that does, so by default, these guys are, uh, the processes are tied to a specific CPU. So what 8002 does is it basically tells SQL to not tie them to a specific CPU. So that when they get unloaded, so that when they have to multitask with another process that's also on that CPU, their stuff will be unloaded. And even though it unloaded and it has to reload, it can reload on a different CPU and keep going. So it's going to keep things moving along and you're not going to see as much badness as possible, which also means that if another CPU I mean, if, if another process has to come in, it could come in on a, on a free CPU and, I, and it may not have to stop my process at all. So it frees up that locking of processes on specific CPUs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. So whenever you, whenever you have to deal with processor affinity, which isn't going to be often because I haven't had to do it in years, Two things. One, don't put IO affinity on the same CPUs as processor affinity. When it says here, uh, automatically set and automatically set, it manages all this for you. You always get that cooperative multitasking thing going on. <clears throat> and two, turn on trace flag 8002 in the startup parameters. And all of this takes a, and, and that takes a reboot to set the IO affinity. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, a reboot or a SQL recycle? Yeah, a SQL burp. I say reboot, but okay. yeah, it's a SQL burp. Um, <clears throat> I just had something else went right out of my head. Uh, what was it? Ah, maybe I'll think of it in a minute. So, <clears throat> And I could show you how we calculate the the bit mask for all of this, but it's or the 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 bit math, but it's way overly complicated and it's not important. What's important is that let's say that I want to add this guy here, right? I'm gonna put another one on there. I can script it, blam, and I'm gonna cancel out of this. And maybe I still have it here. There we go. And it'll set affinity IO mask to a nice integer number from, <clears throat> from the bits. And like I said, it's overly complicated as to how we get the get to this. <clears throat> 
Uh, but, you know, just script it like this and you'll be fine. <clears throat> okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I remember what I was going to say, but it's, it's not important. So, are there any questions on this? Yeah. Uh, what will be the ask for? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Prashant. Yeah. Uh, can we leave the IO affinity mask as automatic and put the processor affinity? How does that behave? Like? Right. So, if I come here and say properties. Let's go back to processors and let's say automatic. There we go. Absolutely. But the problem there is that what I was trying to do was limit the CPUs to half, right? Which means that uh, the processor gets a quarter and the IO gets a quarter. Now the processor gets a quarter and the IO gets three quarters. Oh, yeah. So, right? Because it's gonna, uh, yeah. I guarantee it's gonna use all of them in one way or another. Right. Yep, right? yep, yep. So, yes, you can, but there you go. Okay. Uh, can I put the question in a different way? For example, if we have only the eight CPUs here and we have uh, set the processor affinity uh, for SQL to use the seven CPUs, uh, one for the OS, something like that. So, uh, in that case, uh, how good is that to leave uh, the IO affinity um, to automatic? Um, so let's say, okay, I'm going to restate the question. So, you've got eight CPUs and you set and you set processor to seven and then mm. set the uh and then set the io to automatic yeah yeah so it will try to you it will probably try to use that last cpu but it's not gonna be guaranteed to only use that cpu i would imagine okay so uh, is, does it mean it intelligently finds which CPU is free for the IO affinity to happen and then picks that one? Yeah, well, when you set when you set these CPUs in here for the for the processor, you're going to tell which ones to use and say so. This last one here is going to be free, so it's automatically going to be used for IO. But if it needs to use others, then it'll pick you know it'll pick some that are probably less busy and unload those and use them for IO and then share those processes with SQL, share those IO stuff with SQL processes. Okay. So you'll, be in a, you'll be in a sharing situation at that point. And you're probably in a sharing situation a lot of times anyway, right? If you're on a yeah. bus, it's only got four or six or 12 CPUs and you got a lot of load, then, you know, it's probably going to do its best and you might end up in a sharing situation anyway. I don't really know that much about the internals of how those processes work, you know, how it picks CPUs and, uh, you know, if they, you know, how often they cross over uh, from one, you know, from IO to processor and whatnot. I, I really don't know much about those internals. So uh, your guess is really as good as mine as to exactly how it's going to manage those. And it probably takes somebody pretty deep in the engine to, to know that for sure. And it's probably not going to be the same in all cases. I'm sure there's a, a, a nice complicated algorithm that they use to decide which CPU to go on and whether or not to unload or put it on somebody else and so on. Okay. okay. All right. And with that, I will stop the recording. Conversation. Okay, so I've decided to turn the recording back on. <clears throat> so we're talking about why something would have to give up um, a CPU to begin with, right? So let's say that you've got any type of problem, whether, whether it be a, a query or like an update or a delete statement, right? Why would it have to give up its CPU? Well, <clears throat> that happens all the time. Let's say that, 
it's being blocked by something. It's not just going to sit there and hold that CPU until it's unblocked. That's ridiculous, right? So it'll give up its time on the CPU, and uh, or it'll free up the CPU, and then something else will start using that CPU. And then when it's unblocked, it will grab another CPU, whichever one is free or whichever one it can get into first, and it'll start running again. And a process can do that many times, right? I mean, we see this blocking all the time. And when you see that, it's not that a, a process is sitting there just sitting on a CPU and just waiting, what we call a dead CPU, right? Um, it's got to give up. The, it's got to give up its resources so that it can, you know, let some let something else go while it waits. So uh, that's how a process can have to be basically kicked off of a CPU. And you can see that if you if your process is tied to the same CPU, it's got to wait for other processes now for another process to finish that's also tied to that CPU before it can grab it again. Instead, you know, it's better to let it grab a different CPU if it's available. But if you, but if that second process that it's waiting for on CPU zero has to wait for something and unloads from the CPU, then it can get back in. But that just means that this other process now has to wait for it because they're both tied to that CPU, right? So, that's how that can happen. I thought I would throw that in there as a good discussion here on the